designer uh, that designed super, supercomputers later. So we got a fair amount of work done. Uh, one of the things we found in the, in the business of uh, generating trajectories to the moon is it's not easy. Uh, because of the interaction uh, between the Earth, Moon, and the spacecraft, uh, near the Earth, the trajectory looks exactly like a, a, a conic section, a two-body solution. And uh, in our case, the, it's a very elongated ellipse because the perigee has to be near the Earth and the epigee has to be near the Moon. So that pretty well describes the, you know, defines the orbit that you have to fly. Uh, in the vicinity of the moon, um, it, it looks like a hyperbola, and it looks very much like a hyperbola. But there's that no man's land out between them that both bodies affect the spacecraft pretty, pretty heavily, and so uh, the solution really requires all of the bodies to be present. And then if you add uh, the sun, it's orbit problem. I want to make a comment about why we have to add the sun, and uh, we and, and our time scientists are, are working on that right now. Uh, the sun, uh, if, if we're talking about just the perturbation of the sun, the spacecraft, it's low. The problem is that it uh, perturbs the moon as well. So if you're calculating a trajectory to the moon, and you consider the effect of the sun on the spacecraft, and you also have to consider this, the uh, effect on the moon itself. Otherwise, you get a, a situation where you're considering the acceleration of one body and not the other. Uh, the motion of the moon due to the solar perturbation is extremely complex, and uh, the Brown Hill theory of thousands of terms in a in a uh, Fourier expansion. So we're always looking for simplifications and uh, modifications that will let us study the problem without having to generate these vectors. Uh, I will say that uh, Robert was asking me yesterday how long it took to calculate one of these trajectories. And uh, the answer is minutes, not hours, uh, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, it's not a hard problem because if, if you're using a uh, variable step runger cut sort of integrator, it only takes a couple of hundred integration steps to get there. It's not like trying to calculate thousands of orbits of, of low Earth orbit. Uh, it's a simpler problem than that in terms of just integrating equations of motion. and. Uh, so it doesn't take great gobs of computer um, power. I've calculated lunar trajectories on IBM 1130, which was an ancient 16-bit computer. You like the, the 1130, we had 16K of RAM, that's K bytes, 16K, and a hard drive with 512K. And we were calculating lunar trajectories on that. So. Pretty interesting. Uh, now, the part where it comes in more difficult is deciding how to get there. If you consider uh, the problem, here I am in, in low Earth orbit, and I want to go to the moon, how do you do that? What, where do I start the burn uh, to go into translunar orbit? And uh, how long do I thrust? And all that other thing. Uh, you, you can, in an ordinary uh, numerical integration, we do what we call a, uh, oh, are you seeing me bounce back and forth, I guess? You know? uh, I'll try to be still. Uh, if you give the trajectory an initial set of initial conditions, a position and velocity relative to the Earth, you just let it run, just integrating the equations of motion, uh, you can follow it out and you arrive somewhere. But that somewhere is hardly ever at the moon. Uh, you can go through some spherical trig sorts of uh, 
calculations and help to narrow down the search, but eventually you're going to have to do a search. Uh, I first went to work for GE. Uh, they had none of that stuff. They had the in-body program, very accurate uh, numerical integrator uh, that could solve motion around all the planets plus plus the moon. Uh, but they had nothing in the way of calculating what the initial conditions should be. And their advice to me was, just run the trajectories till you get near the moon. And that's just not workable. This you've got six degrees of freedom. You can't just do all an error on that. Uh, so what we did was we worked out a lot of uh, spherical trig type stuff uh, to come up with the geometry that we needed, the orbit plane, the uh, trajectory plane, the, the lunar orbit plane, so forth, of course, the equator, uh, and work out the geometry that would get us near the moon. Now, because of the perturbation, uh, you don't actually get there still. So you still have to do a uh, an iteration in some fashion. And uh, the, the problem when you look at it that way is called the two-point boundary value problem. And it's one of the most difficult in dynamics to work because it, it essentially involves an iteration on the initial conditions that will reach final, the final condition that you want. Uh, well, during my period at, at both uh, NASA and GE, um, I wrote a, a quite a number of programs that would solve that. And uh, that's really sort of what I uh, claim to be my, my uh, claim is that uh, I claim to, to uh, Jack, hello. There it is. Uh, and yeah. one thing, I am due to the time with uh, passing. I think we should do the question part now, if you feel up to it. Huh? Okay. If Thanks. everything's fine. With I, it? Just, okay. I, I just wanted to say one more thing. Hey, okay, no is, problem, no problem. Sorry. Yep. Uh, it, at GE, I worked on one of the first, I think, to work on abort trajectories. Uh, we had a, what we call a fast return. And the circumlunar trajectory was a free return. And if any of you saw the movie uh, uh, Apollo 13, there's a conversation there where you know the flight director uh, gets told that there's a problem, and he says, uh, "Can we do a fast return?" And the other guy says, "No, we'll have to do a free return." And I really like that exchange because that just describes my entire work for Apollo. Okay. Um, that's, that's, that's. Okay. Just, Any questions? Can I just ask anyone who wants yeah. Can I just ask anyone who wants to ask a question? Um, just to uh, queue up and use the microphones here, um, rather than shout out, because poor old Jack's not yeah. going to hear it. Go ahead. Yep. Hi. Uh, I was just curious, since you were talking about how computing power um, was so different back in the 60s compared to what it is now, um, if you are doing anything substantially different in terms of uh, planning the trajectory for this mission, um, is, there a, is there a different approach or different methods that you're using to take advantage of all of the computing power that you have now? Actually, there is a couple. Uh, the first thing is that on the Apollo missions, even if we were landing on the moon, uh, it was still a pre return trajectory. Is there a problem? Okay. Uh, the the idea was that when we leave the Earth, thing goes right. We need no mid-course corrections. Our guidance has been perfect. We'll come back to the Earth and re-enter in a satisfactory re-entry corridor. Uh, we we did that uh, obviously for safety reasons, uh, even when we were planning to land on the moon. Uh, we don't have to do that uh, for the Lunar X Prize.